down in the mountains of Val de Osta, Italy. A lot of people in this valley came from northern Italy. Names you'll recognize after you've been around a while, like Jerboz or Cerise. Have you ever heard of the Arbany family? The settlers came here in the 1880s looking for the land of plenty, and I think they found it. In 1882, I took the long journey from Italy to Denver, traveling on train to Granite. I hopped the stage from there to Independence Pass, and then rode over the top in a sleigh. I darn near froze to death on the journey. I'd underestimated the temperatures. I thought March was spring. I barely stopped in Aspen before going directly to Woody Creek to hook up with my wife's cousin, Fred Clavel, who put me to work immediately. Wages were $200 per year, plus room and board, and smoking tobacco. I felt like I'd found a new home. I wrote my wife back in Italy asking her to come join me. I bought a deserted homestead next to Fred's place and cleared 20 more acres of farmland and eagerly awaited for my wife and youngins to come join me. When I finally got here, I bought more land since we kept having sons instead of daughters. Our first home was a log cabin with a dirt floor, dirt wood roof, and no running water. We aren't all that different from all the other ranchers in the valley. We are all extremely self-sufficient or stubbornly independent, according to my wife. By the time I got here, the elk and most of the deer had been killed off by all the miners and settlers trying to put meat on the table. So we lived mostly off a lot of fish out of Woody Creek until the runoff from the mine tailings at Lenado killed off the fish. We grew the rest of our food at home on the ranch, butchering an occasional milk or beef cow to provide some meat. We lost two children who were born on the ranch. They just got sick and died. We buried them here in Woody Creek, and although their graves aren't marked, we know where they are. It wasn't very easy in the beginning. I had to learn a new language, and the land, even when it was partially cleared, had to be cultivated and developed. Fences and irrigation ditches needed to be built. Mostly it was just hard work, but we had a ready market for all we could produce with the miners in Aspen. I drive to town about once a week in our wagon, taking whatever I think will sell chickens, eggs, summer vegetables, potatoes, homemade cheese, a load of hay, and once in a while, I sneak in a little homemade wine. Seven years after we arrived, a bunch of us ranchers from Woody Creek all traveled to Denver together to get our U.S. citizenship. My papers include my wife and my three sons who were born in Italy. That was a big day for all of us. The railroad arriving in the valley proved to be a tremendous benefit for all of us who grow things. It remains a convenient way to get produce and livestock to other areas besides this valley and on to Denver. And our potato crops became famous nationally because they were served exclusively in the railroad dining cars. We never intend to leave this valley, so after the value of silver crashed in 1893, we just tightened our belts a little. We've always lived frugally, so I was able to pick up enough ranch land to put all five of my sons into business, and I bought a few more ranches on the side just fiddling around to see if I could figure out what the optimum operational acreage might be. All in all, life's pretty darn good. I can't think of a better place to raise a family and make a living than right here in Woody Creek.